Okay, that's okay. That's okay. Well, look at that. I have evidence. 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 I how do we flush it out? Because they're in the limelight right now. Thank you very much. There is a saying that the jaw can never rest until whatever that is the mouth is exhausted. Okay. This issue, you see, the issue about national security <clears throat> cannot be reduced to partisanship. Okay. Once that we reduce issue about peace and security to partisanship, mm -hmm. then it's a recipe for disaster. The whole thing is that there are rebels in the system. There are cartels. There are deviants. We can't promote an indisciplined society. We need to check all these social vices. Every day when we get up and say there is an increase in crime rate, armed robbery and others, we ask ourselves, where do they get their encouragement from? From all these uh, so-called vigilantes. Now, political parties normally use this groups of people, especially the youth, to help them in propagating their agenda. And uh, at the end of the day, when uh, assuming they win power or not, these groups also demand for their share of the national cake because they, they claim they play a pivotal mm. role in yes. yeah. winning elections. Yeah. So if they have not been attended to, then at the end of the day, if uh, persuasion fails, force them to be applied. Okay. Now, when you look at it holistically, you realize that uh, political parties, seeing the Fourth Republic, to me personally, um, tries to undermine the authorities of the security agencies, thereby giving uh, some form of courage, hope, to this uh, vigilantism that, oh, ones that have, have voted for NDC and NDC is in power, I can do anything at all and I'll be protected. Okay. If not, if re we really know that uh, police will come after us, then by all means, you'll be, you'll be afraid of uh, misbehaving. So at the end of the day, there are arrogance, there are hooligans, there are recalcitrants, and we are promoting uh, a society that fails to obey others. So I think that is, is, is a call it's a wake-up call for all, all of us. Now, looking forward, you realize that we need to, I think personally, we need to integrate both the police and the military if really we want to fight this kind of menace. I think the way we practice democracy is rather the deterrent of our own development because without peace, tranquility, there is, there is no way we can develop. Okay. And it's like we are taking our peace in Ghana for granted. When you look at what is happening, and we look at what is happening uh, around the globe, we are taking the peace that we are enjoying now for granted, granted as yeah. if it's something that we can just go to market and buy. Or it's just a TV or a decoder that we can just buy and store at home. Let me tell you, if there is a single war in Ghana now, all of us will be laughing at the wrong side of our mouth. And the damage that it will cause, we all live to regret. Okay. You see, there are uh, thousands and millions of Ghanaians who are not politicians. So politicians must not continue disturbing the peace of noble Ghanaians who don't want to play politics. Okay. That is the bottom line. Okay. Now, you realize that this vigilantism is gaining grounds day in, day out, mm -hmm. simply because we have no mechanisms to prevent them you realize that the police service tries its possible best. But uh, when you look at the Constitution, the Constitution has given the president so much power, not the current president per se, the presidency so much power in yeah. terms of appointment. Yeah. So shall we have an, a, a body that will appoint the IGP so that the IGP will not be looking at the president as direct boss, okay. whereby if I don't go to their lines of thinking, then I'll be removed or I'll be implicated in minor issues that uh, need not to be any issue at all. Then at the end of the day, I'll be removed from my position. Okay. So you do everything possible to protect your, your, your work, your portfolio, and your office. I think that's why we're having problem. So if we should have maybe um, an association of uh, 
uh, vice chancellors of uh, the universities, mm -hmm. public universities in mm -hmm. Ghana, that will be the appointing author uh, authority for maybe a uh, position of uh, inspector general of police and the deputy. You realize that the whole concept will change. The whole concept will change. This kind of master servant relationship, most of the times, it puts fear and the police service is not living to its expectation. So we are not seeing that level. Everyone wants to know. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. We need to do the things we can review. I also think that some of the problem comes from the religious leaders, intellectuals, okay. chiefs. Why, why, you know, why, why that? You know, yeah. as a parent, I know yeah. what I'm saying. Okay. If you tend to love one of your child more than the other, mm. the one that you love so much, mm. that you refuse to correct, mm -hmm. one day, okay. that child will tend to harm you. Okay. Mm. In this country, these groups that I've just mentioned, yeah. About 99.9% mm -hmm. believes that MPP are angels and NDC are devil. So when we are in power, every little thing, the way they will come up with statement, religious leader with statement, blah, blah, statements, when it gets to MPP, they tend to forget it. Mm. So now, the <laughs> respect, I'm coming, sir, mm. the respect mm. that a lot of Ghanaians are having for them is coming down. So if they want to regain that respect, then please, what is bad is bad. They should be bold enough to stop it now so that in okay. future, no okay. group you see, I am happy. You also oh. have the opportunity. Very good to do it. All right. So, so, so deal with from, it from now. Yeah. So, so I'm happy you're saying that. I was very happy you're saying this morning. So, like you're what? saying that before you come out, before you come out, because you mentioned a few oh, yeah. minutes earlier that's that right. that you would also come up with groups and all that. So, if you're saying that yes. what was bad is bad, why then are you looking at doing a thing like that? You know, contradicting yourself. So, I want yourself. them to come in now mm. and resolve it okay. before it gets out of hand. Okay. Because these groups always try to pamper MPP. But when it's NDC, you see them coming out with statements. So if now they come together and say what MPP is doing is not good and resolve the problem, it will not push us also to go in. All right, come on. You have, you, you have Truth to, is big. This morning, it's, it's, it's quite refreshing. refreshing. Come on, you have the last yeah, one on It's quite yes. refreshing to be here this morning. Yes. I hear Madam Anita is always say that, look, there's some respect given to MPP and that that respect is declining. I mean, I'm happy that um, she's alluded to the fact that we are a civil party, we are a respected party, you know, and, and that's a very happy one. I mean, I'm, 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 a good, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to belong to MPP. You just said it. I said the religious she said religious. Yes. The religious she said was, she was, oh, yes. No, no, she said yes. that. She said, she started with yeah, she said no, no, no. religious yeah. leader, intellectuals, people yes. who are out there, see yes. civil society, they see she MPP has. as a respected party mm -hmm. and as angels. And now, and then she said that the now the respect is coming down, so we should try and do something so oh that the respect will continue. See, he didn't get it. No, no, no. I think that, uh, with all seriousness, let us all join hands to fight this um, 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 uh, come on yeah. come on uh, madam if he's misquoted you please say no 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 he said right what did he not say right what he not say right what he said that i said the respect, the respect is coming down no, so we should try and work on it the mpp they are pumping you people and now they are saying that you want to are they are trying to they are afraid of you you know and you can have a child that you love so much at the end of the day you'll be afraid of that child okay now they are all afraid of you because anyway that's right okay i mean that was just on a lighter note but of course i mean she she did say something but i'm saying that look it is important we all crack the whip now it's important we engage people. You see, I have always professed a solution, outreach. When we are going for campaign like she's doing campaigning now, you reach out to the people. You go even to villages that you never expected you would go mm -hmm. to talk to voters and all that. Yes. After the power is given, you have cause to tell them why you are not able to come to that village. Mm -hmm. It's wrong. Ah, so what wait, 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 I'm, I'm saying that I'm to change the Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not well, allowing No, I'm not changing it. I'm not, I'm not, see, I'm saying that Whoever comes on the table with you to work, mm. recognition is very important. There are two R's in politics, respect and recognition. 
If you work with these two words, trust me, as a politician, you will go far. Respect all and recognize all. The time you were in need, you went out there and spoke to people with language that they understood you and said, okay, let's go to whatever you want us to do. Let us help you to be able to succeed. Let's move on. Then, after getting power or after getting what you want, the seeming neglect out there, obviously there will be, there will be problem. Obviously. I've always advocated. I am an executive of the party. I'm a deputy director of communication of our party. After of course, see. and I've, I've, I've also been mm -hmm. a, an exec elected executive as well. Yeah. She's a chairperson of the NDC, yeah. the vice chairperson, yeah. as it were. Yeah. And of course, she's still contesting to be somebody. Yeah. We've all been frontline politicians, and we've all engaged people out yeah. there. It is she and myself who would be able to solve this problem. How can we do that? My, my people who I went to, can I reach out to them? cannot let them understand the situation I am in. It is when you create a gap that the person thinks that you have used and dumped me. Therefore, let me make noise. Then we can all come in. But where we all try to appear as people who respect our all and recognize all, I'm not sure we'll be here discussing this matter at all. Mm -hmm. So we are ready and poised as a party. We MPP, we are committed to making sure that we will fight this and make sure it goes down. Mm -hmm. I want to hear her say same. I've heard her general secretary telling us that they are going out there with the hawks mm. and all that. I think it's not going to help our matters. You continue to do yeah, the same. Come on, come on. Come on. We, the, the, will the, the, the hours will not help. Come on, the rippling effects. Yeah. Yeah. The help. rippling effects of these creation of these groups. Mm. Okay, <laughs> like you're saying, um, when some of some of you go on your campaign yeah. trails and all that, do we tell them the truth? Do we tell them? That we can do this and not do this, because it is out to, like you say, it's out no, to we sell them see, see, that, that that causes uh, to be, this. To be this. very to be very honest with you, because they have expectations. We are having a generic problem to face with, and you know what the generic problem what is? is it? It? Pol polarization, yeah, no, polarization of our own country. I am telling you that it's a dangerous thing, Reverend. Now meritocracy doesn't work. And you agree with me, it's something that we have actually sown in ourselves. That NDC is in okay. power. Somebody comes in and say, I am NDC. Madam Anita Jusso, take my son to say this school. MPP mm -hmm. is in power. Somebody comes, I am MPP. Take my son to this school. Mm -hmm. We have tend to make politics most powerful entity. When you go to other countries, I tell you, the businessman, the technocrat, the person who is supposed to sit and get this to happen is the one who is the most powerful, not the politician. However, in our society, we have made politics to rule everything. You want to do national service, it's politics. You want to go into military, it's politics. You want to go into police, it's politics. Not too long ago, NCC chairperson came out and said, look, the recruitment we do in the police service, yeah. can we minimize yeah. the political so, interference? So mm. Look, I could not have agreed with her anymore. It's excellent. Okay. Once you make some of these comments, somebody will say, you are not political. Mm. You are being too objective. But look, okay. we are a growing democracy, and we want okay. to get to where the people who right. are emulated also I will are. come back and ask um, you and Madam De Soso, the way forward when it comes to this. Remember, you have your last word. Your, uh, yeah, your last <laughs> word on this one. Um, um, governance is for the people and by the people. Yeah. Of, like, we're leaving, like he's saying, we're leaving the people out and it's just them at the top. Absolutely. It's, it's not working. So what's your last uh, your last bit on this one and then I'd go with them and go to the next uh, before a little break. Yes. Yes, uh, I think we, 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 we can't run away from the fact that um, we can't use these guys and at the end of the day just dump them okay and um, overnight they see us in v8 nice houses nice bungalows eating the juicy fruits mm. and others mm. and they will be thinking as to what to eat at home okay but always they will think that they have done the 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 grassroots work and mm -hmm. for that matter they they deserve. so give us a suggestion one suggestion as to how we can curb this <laughs> Is, is, is an old ancient problem. Okay. Even when you go to our vi various villages, this problem exists. Mm. Even in the chiefstancy yes. circles, uh, various factions yeah. uh, form groups there. and mm. associations to fight there. each other. Mm. So it's, I think we need a level of education. What I've seen is that these people who involve in the, uh, this vigilantism, 
most of times they are an, uh, not educated. So I believe you society is educated. Mm. Uh, most of these well, will most reduce. Of them are. Yeah. Most of them yes. are. But, but it is very difficult for, for, for you to use job. somebody who is uh, well educated mm. for this. It's because they are not occupied. They are not, yes. no jobs. Uh, there, Can we there say are, that? There are jobs. Okay. Mm. There are jobs depending okay. on where you stand. All right. Mm. Okay. If you learn, uh, but, okay. <coughs> if, you right. learn if you learn, if you learn, you are artisan. Mm. There is always a job. I have okay. guys in my church, mm. and they they are always working. Okay. So that I don't I don't believe that. Yours is a different jobs. scenario. <laughs> All right. So now let me come to Alaji and Madam. Now, Alaji and Madam, we have other political parties. Why is that they are not doing these so things? They do. Some of them. They are. do. Yeah. Really. Yeah, All right. So moving forward, let me start with you. Moving forward. Yes. I think um, not until we stop this blame game, okay, we can solve this problem. Okay. The NDC will continue to blame MPP. MPP will continue to blame NDC. Let's not. Is it show of power? I'm saying that it's not show of power. It's it's it's, it's, it's with all respect, a show of to borrow the words of um, NDC, needless bravado. You understand? I mean, I mean did, did they say that? I know that? Did the NDC say that? Who when said they were it? supposed to investigate their people regarding this legalism, they said it was a show of needless bravado. You've forgotten about that? Hey. No, oh, you've forgotten? Mm. Oh, the BNI said it was needless show of bravado. I mean, they borrow their word. So, you see, uh, I, 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 think, I, think, I, think, I think it's a sad situation, a sad spectacle. It is. And we are not careful. We may underrate it. Then it gets to a level where we have ourselves to blame in terms of plunging this country into some civil war, God forbid, in a way. Because in other countries, that has happened. I just gave example of La Côte d'Ivoire. Mm. When now the president of La Côte d'Ivoire, Alassane Ouattara, came in coming from the northern part of Côte d'Ivoire, was seen to even not be a citizen of the country. When after he has become a prime minister to Ofoe Boye, you understand? Mm. So the people also now group and said, no, we will not agree. The northerners are short change. We are going to fight. Mm. Before we realized La Côte d'Ivoire was burning, um, the one who is the uh, president of the assembly now, Gillian Soro. Mm -hmm. Gillian Soro from the north also had his group. Then IB. IB also had his group. So they started forming militants. And before I realized, a whole lot of problems. In Liberia, we had that happening as well. So for me, the way forward is that it is not bad in this country. One, the media has a role to play. Sometimes, with all respect to the media, we say, bring out certain reports and blow them out of proportion. That's my problem. We should find a way of getting the content coming from the media to be in a way reporting exactly what had happened. So that somebody will not feel bad that I have been, my action has been exaggerated. And then let me explain myself and prove myself right. But if they, they like what happened in Tafu <coughs> yeah. a party constituency meeting. We've had series of this happening in this country since the inception of the Fourth Republican Constitution. Then now, it has given birth to vigilantism. Hey, we are going to have civil war. You see, you see when we do such a reportage, okay. we are not careful as a problem. So the media ought to come out responsibly, with a greater respect to them. They are the fourth estate of the realm, as they are deemed. They should try to make sure that we don't blow stories out of proportion and then create fear and panic in the system. Okay. Two, political parties. Very important, this one. I was in Ada with um, the General Secretary of um, NDC. Mm -hmm. That was last year, okay. 2016. Till end of the 2016. <coughs> I was in Ada representing my party. He was there. Other political parties were invited. We had a roundtable discussion on this same subject mm -hmm. matter. Mm -hmm. And the police were there. Mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. uh, Yehonu also yeah. was the one who presided yeah. over. Mm -hmm. We all came in and then we came up with a communique at a point. As to where they've kept it is a matter. But I'm saying that one now, the president of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Aladan Kakufadu, not too long ago, had caused to invite all political parties to the Flagstaff House. I mean, sorry, to the Jubilee House. Mm. They came to the Jubilee House and said, look, my message to you is simple. How can you help me so that we can all see the forward march of Mother Ghana? That was a very noble step that he took to have invited all political parties, it's about time. IEA is there. Let's get IEA to invite all political parties. <coughs> Let's get IDEC 
they can also do it. Let's get CDT. They can also do it. Most of this pro governance, uh, you know, okay. uh, think tanks right. can get Everybody us on board and let us discuss this okay. and agree on the matter. Then finally, when we agree, there should be a private member bill going to parliament, and there could be an act mm. against such vigilantism. If okay. there's a law. Right now, there's no law. <coughs> if there's a law against it, then you say that any political party that holds it, you forfeit your license as a political party in this okay. country. You don't even take part. All right. I'm sure we'll discover it. Okay, my steps, We can take steps. All right, so Aladi has given three, yeah. three, three categories of how he thinks can be curbed. We can take steps. Um, so, um, your your final word on this matter. Um, moving forward, what what? How do we care of this? Thank you very much. Uh, now that people are blaming them, their party and others, look at what he's saying. That uh, let's go and meet. Let's sign something. Let's do <laughs> sign what? <laughs> we are not going to sign any document. Really? Yes, we are not going to so, sign any oh, okay. document. Okay. The first thing so that can be is the violence is in the field. Let Yes. The best solution is mm -hmm. that religious groups intellectuals, mm -hmm. chiefs, mm -hmm. and others will sit down with the political party leaders. Okay. Because before Nana Ekufuadu became president, mm -hmm. so the leader himself have shown a sign but he called political parties together and everything. Wait, yes. Wait. That. Calling them together does not resolve the problem. <laughs> Talking to them, letting them know. But he has to do Yes, who are working. My, my yeah. They are working. At yeah. the end of the day, they will go behind the scene and go and do what they are doing. Okay. Do you think this time we will believe them? We will not believe okay. them. So now that so we see oh. them oh. doing what they are saying in you their party. Okay. So if you have this All right, so now the new scholars they will have not. Posture. As a, a, a sign any document until they change. So because even when they, they were in the power, yeah, even easy. when they were in power, not before the election, look at what they did to us. Me, me, I'm we were in power, okay. but the way they behave, bringing people from yeah. Serbia, mm. from South Africa, yeah. doing yeah. APC. Yeah. What I'm saying yes. is that the chiefs and others should set the political okay. parties down. So for you, you're calling for them to do that. Yes, okay. talk through it. Then call the Delta forces. If they need some assistance, they should let's help them. Then after that, That's we'll see the way forward. Are because they? my brother, what they are doing, let me tell you. Now that they are in power and the boys are putting pressure on them, that's why they are saying this. Mm. They should also call Kenai Japan because he started this thing. Okay. And we want to tell them if they do not dismantle this thing by December, then it means that they can't do it again because mm -hmm. 2019 campaign starts at 2019 and we will not have time to mm. come and sit down and talk about this. If they want, if they want to <laughs> stop it, they should stop it before 2020 so that we all signed okay. and talked to our children mm. that's it then we move on with a different page we are afraid they are cowards <laughs> <laughs> so they should come <laughs> yes. 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 So what, what i'm saying so is that you and and you and 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 your no you see but she's called the chief she's called the chief my brother one thing is that if you know you are at fault accept it don't try to link somebody into it if you do that then it means you are not willing for it to be solved just as said yes we are in power and our boys are doing a b c d now we want it to be resolved. So please, the elders, chiefs, and others should come together with other political parties. Okay. Let's resolve it. Then okay. we do that. But only signing paper for you uh, tomorrow to come and start it again. We will not okay. sit down and mm. sleep. Madam, right, right. right. let me ask you this. Uh, concerning this as well, um, when we make unrealistic mm. promises mm. Um, on certain levels, it's a contribution, right? Mm. To me, it's yes and no. Okay. My party have not made such promises. Not on party basis, like oh. individuals you know, who go and you campaign know, and all that. You know, yeah. I said something. 2016 Selective elections. Amnesia. 2016 <laughs> elections. <laughs> nobody ran away with a ballot box. Okay. Yeah. How many polling stations do they have such a thing? None. Okay. So what was the need of training uh, training these boys to come and protect your boxes? Okay. They have created the problem, so they should resolve it. Right. They have the antidote because we do not, we they have not created it, they have yeah. created it. Let them raise up their hand and say that we are fed up, please, we are sorry, let's come together. Then we'll come together okay. because we know them more than they know themselves. Yeah, they will say A hey, today, today right. they will do a different thing. All right, I'm going to bring in my viewers right now okay. and then after this, I'm going to comment and then yeah. continue. I mean, I mean, I mean what the All right, question call. is that. Come on, no, come on, no. Uh, don't talk after, no, it's okay. Because <laughs> if you talk, Madam has to talk. No, I'm not All saying right. anything. If you talk, so I'm just talking about this. 
Okay, let me go. Let me go to my viewers. Now, this one says that. Good morning. Good morning. Please, I want to ask Kamal Dean. Um, please stop calling the light, the, the number, please. Yeah. Now, I want to ask Kamal Dean. Kamal, this is your question. Yeah. Who brought about all die be die? Let him answer. Yeah. Let him yeah. answer. The MPP were determined to bring chaos mm. if they never won the election. So mm. why then does he speak like that? Now, until we're educated rightly by our individual political party heads, the vigilantism will never cease because they, political heads, actually fund these societies. Mm -hmm. Now, the MPP... The MPP should never see that they are being respected. He should be aware that Ghanaians don't respect them because of the many promises they made. You didn't give me your well, name. Make said, sure, you make sure you give me your name when you're sending you your said. messages. Let me go to. I do like three or four of them. Now this one says that. Um, good morning, sir. I agree with Alhaji. Um, I agree. I agree with what Alhaji is saying about employment in Ghana. If you are a parent belong to to no to no party, your child will get no employment. No employment in Ghana. He's called Zakaria. Okay, then the next one says that um, Hello, my name is Felix from Tashi. GTV, you do all. Because my, my, my any institution you apply, if you don't know anyone in politics, please forget it. Even forces. Okay, mm -hmm. alright. And then this one says that This is our backers from Ofinso Ashanti. What Madam Anita said, respectful, wasn't referring to the MPP, but rather to the religious leaders and the chiefs. Yes, so this is a MPP. correction to the MPP defender. Oh. Yeah. He should stop laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He should stop <laughs> laughing and being happy because it doesn't go to them. He, to, to them. Yeah. He's sorry. Yeah, yeah. And so he that's it thank now. You very okay, much. and then let me do like uh, two more. And then we go for a little break. Now, this says that, good morning, my name is Raymond from Kaswa. I believe this vigilantism is as a result of some arrogant leaders that we have. When a leader does not listen and take advice, this is what would happen. Let us check this from the top. Okay, and then the last one I'm going to read, there are thousands, thousands, thousands of messages. Alaji is saying, Alaji is saying the truth. I wish we were like, we were like him to talk this is bosco in damango yeah. all right and then this says that <laughs> albert joy from the west said mpp is the most violent party to all political parties they illegally sack demote beat people simply because they are members of the party therefore the mpp man should stop deceiving Ghanaians. um okay and then the last one says that <laughs> mpp man has spoken well we are polarized ghana god bless him from akampegi assumption all right so we will go for a little break, and when we come back, we will go straight into energy. You're watching the big breakfast show that happens every Saturday between 7.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. We'll be right back. And you're watching <laughs> the big breakfast show, and uh, we're discussing very pertinent issues that happened last week. And the very last one we're going to be looking at um, is, is the um, is the energy sector. And um, in the studio to with the, helping us with the discussion this morning, we have Alaji Kamal Dean Abdullahi, Deputy National Communications Director of the MPP. Um, we have Madam Anita Jemima Desoso, the National Vice Chairperson NDC, a strong, strong, strong and woman of substance and incoming um, national organizer of the NDC. And then last but not the least, we have the Reverend Dr. Samuel Walanyo Minsa, a chartered accountant, um, economist, and um, a senior lecturer at the Wisconsin University. All right, so um, let me go to the very last thematic area we're looking at energy. I'm starting with the daily graphic um, dated Monday, October 8th, 2018. If you go to page... Um, page 32 of the story it says president akufado inaugurates boga waga electricity project now president nana adodanka kufado has inaugurated the 225 kilowatts um, bogatanga to wagadugu power interconnection project following uh, which ghana can now supply up to a hundred megawatts um, of power directly to burkina faso President of, the president of the ceremony was the president of Burkina Faso, Mr. Raj Mark Christian Kabori. Speaking of the, of the ceremony, President Akufado said the successful completion of the project was a credit to the strong
strong bonds of friendship and the cooperation that existed between Ghana and Burkina Faso. He said the um, execution of the project was one of the priority projects of the West Africa Power Pool, adding that the project had also achieved the objective of strengthening regional integration under ECOWAS protocols and the realization of, of a regional <coughs> electricity market. Um, good project. Um, um, opening our, 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 our frontiers and all that. Let me start with you, Kamal. Well, thank for you. Me, my, for me, my question is, um, um, we, we have, um, it's, it's opening the regional integration and all that. But you see, Africa has a very, very funny, um, funny terrain. It, it could be this government one now, this, that, this, that, all troubles here and there. How do we forge ahead with these regional integration projects uh, well, when we talk about regional integration mm. i want to think that the sub-region has started this long ago um since 1975 before i was born you know um we got the inception of ECOWAS, and we've come all the way just to promote trade between ourselves and also to promote human if you like movements um, across our borders and all that okay. so it is no news I mean, it's no new now mm. to have Burkina Faso and Ghana having such mm. an agreement put in place to see how Burkina Faso can purchase power from Ghana. I think, I think that when Akosomo was being built, mm. and consideration of how we can get other, you know, um, uh, power sectors, okay. I mean, coming up to produce much more um, to our grid. Mm. The idea had to do with if, of course, we're able to have much power, we can also export same out there. Um, I remember some time ago, Togo fed on us a little. Burkina Faso has fed on us mm -hmm. to the extent that mm -hmm. we also also fed on La Côte d'Ivoire. Yeah, we did. Well, Ghana, we also got power from La Côte d'Ivoire. Mm. Um, I'm happy that today we have had a prudent government in place. A government that, of mm -hmm. course, is gifted with better management and excellent administration in place. That at least 18 months in government, we have not seen doom so. We have rather seen exportation of electricity. We are exporting electricity to Burkina Faso. That's a very great one. It is about prudent management. It's about managing Ghana so well that you move on. Not too long ago, we had course. If I had course to come to GBC to have a discourse, you would have to go out there and buy diesel for your genset before we can sit here. Mm. You see, the President of the Republic of Ghana today has ensured that mm. we don't visit such <laughs> ugly times. Okay. Um, for four good years, we knew what um, lack of power had done to us when AGI were complaining, when the barbers were complaining, when people would get up and cannot make ends meet because they need to barber one hair to get to one, one, one person to get to at least one city. Those things all have totally been pushed down. The success story is that we have had calls or we are having calls to export at least some little amount of electricity to Burkina Faso. I would like this to be a nine day wonder. Like you rightly said, sometimes we start and then some things come up and all that. I mean, I wouldn't like this to be a nine-day wonder. Okay. It is about we continue with this sort of pragmatic management, sort of excellent management of whatever we do have. If we have excess and our colleagues in the, our, our neighbors in Burkina Faso need it, why can't we give it to them? We give it to them. As it stands now, generation capacity in this country is running to the 4,000 megawatts. Mm. I mean, <laughs> usage in this country we need less than 2000 2200 megawatts we don't need more than that so if we have excess it calls for us to move on that is why we have reviewed the power purchase agreement the packs that we came to meet and in reviewing it you won't you believe me or not seven billion dollars has actually been saved Madagana. We have done this work in this country. Mm -hmm. So I want to say the President of the Republic is on course. I want to say the government of the day is on course. And I want to say that the energy sector, which is so imperative to the growth of our economy, is indeed monitored and monitored so well. So that at the end of the day, Ghana will not go back to the days of John Dramani Mahama when he had to punish us with doing so for four good years and make us suffer.
We will not go back there again. The president is focused, and we are focused, and we are going to make sure that the energy sector right. will be very. Okay, clear. your time is up. Yes, um, let me, oh, Madam, Madam De Soso. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Oh, yes, it seems. Arjun, that, uh, don't say anything. Mm. Don't say anything. Maybe he has forgotten. <laughs> this doom so started since 1983. Oh, then later to 98. Okay. <laughs> then after 98, it was stable before you people came. Around 2006, it was worse off. If you remember, Roku Brube then was at VRE. He went and brought in a plant we didn't use for about 18 months. We wasted money. Later, they brought in generators into this country, tall generators. If he has also forgotten, even Bumid Dam, they went for money. Do you know that as at now, every year, we give them, I think, about 40,000 tons of cocoa. For, between 40 to 60,000. Really? We are paying it for 15 years. Really? So when NDC, one prof came, he said, no, he has to expand the freedom. So he went and renegotiated with the Chinese people. After that, when JDM also came, he said, no, we have to export energy. So what can we do? That's why America, power, solar, other different types of energy were able to get it. Because before you come out of Gimso, you have to put things down. Since 2015, December, I quite remember, Gimso stopped. So ask him, when they came 2016, let's say January 2017, how many plants have they brought into this country? There are many that we went for, for five years, five, ten million, and they were going to do 419, and they were caught, and the president said, I was misled. Is that what he's talking about? What have they done at the energy sector? None. So he should not try to praise themselves. He should not, because we have the data, and we are going to tell the people, how many rural areas have they sent electricity to? It's only NDC, under NDC government that we do a